In this holy month of Ramadan, Muslims all over the world are fasting and being or living far away from home is not a reason to be absent from performing the ritual. Joining us via Zoom are Shafira Ekaputri Dermawan, Indonesian residing in Melbourne, Australia, who will be sharing with us her activities as Muslims staying for living abroad. And also we have Deandra Ashila, Overseas Indonesian Students Association from Kedah, Malaysia. Hello, Deandra, and also Safira. Hello. Hey, Paulina. Good afternoon from Melbourne. Hello, good afternoon. Um, all right, so I'm going to ask you two questions about, you know, living abroad and having to um, fast in a foreign countries. Is this your first time for both of you? Maybe I'll go to Deandra first. Okay, um, first thing first, thank you so much for having us here. Um, I would like to introduce myself first. So uh, my name is Deandra Ashila and I'm an undergraduate student. I'm currently taking business administration here. And to answer the question, um, it's actually my second time um, having a fasting in Ramadan here. Um, far, far away from home, um, exactly from, I'm from Aceh. And um, yeah, it's my second time um, to have um, fasting here. Okay, uh, that's good to hear. Okay, now uh, how about you, uh, Safira? Is this your first time? Sure, I'm Safira, a master's student at the University of Melbourne, and this is my first time doing fasting in Melbourne. This is not my first time fasting abroad before, but uh, not for the full month, maybe around three weeks at max. So my first time doing the whole of Ramadan abroad. Okay. So uh, can you t uh, tell us uh, what is the most different things uh, about you know, doing uh, uh, fasting or having Ramadan abroad? Maybe I'll go to Safira now. Okay, I think what's uh, the most different is the community feeling of celebrating and fasting together in Ramadan. In Indonesia, it's a Muslim majority country, so you know that most people around you, they are fasting. And for those who don't, they try to accommodate and respect us. Uh, they try not to eat and drink in front of us. And if you pass by a restaurant, you can see that they put up lines on the window so we don't have to see someone eating. And also offices uh, also adjust their work hours so people can get home earlier. But here, uh, since uh, Muslims are minority, we don't have the same luxury, I would say. Okay, uh, that's from Australia. How about in Malaysia, Deandra? Um, yeah, actually, as we know, Malaysia and Indonesia are quite similar, but um, not really similar. But here in Malaysia, I didn't really find any difficulties um, since like uh, we can find food easily and it's all halal. And also um, there are variety of foods that we can find here. And majority of uh, Malaysian is also Muslim. So I, I didn't really find any difficulties, but we can't deny that. Indonesian food is always what we look for. So yeah, that's all I think. <laughs> okay. Um, so in so that means in Malaysia, uh, you you don't find any difficulties in doing your key uh, rituals, for example, tarawih or uh, other kinds of activities during Ramadan. Um, for me, especially, um, I use um, I, I really like to um, having my iftar in mosque. So in our university, we have a mosque uh, nearby. So I usually uh, have iftar there with my friends and directly going to the tarawi. And I didn't find any difficulties because, as we as I just uh, mentioned, majority of Malaysians uh, we are Muslims, so it's it's easier for us. I guess I could say. Okay, how about in Melbourne? Do you find any difficulties in doing your key rituals? In terms of Tarawih, there's a lot of mosques here in Melbourne, so it's easy to access them as well. But unlike Indonesia, it's a bit late. They start around 9.30 to 10. So it's a bit late for me. I mostly do it at home, but I've done it a couple of times at the mosque, but it's easier to do it at home. In terms of food as well, um, of course, Indonesian food is uh, hard to find here, especially iconic Tagil food, such as gorengan, kolak, <laughs> cendil es campur. Those uh, Tagil food is hard to find here. And of course, don't forget the traditional eat cookies like nastar, kastengel, putri salju, I've missed that. So yeah. 
<laughs> so that means it's hard for you to um, eat during sahur or iftar as well, or maybe because you have to prepare everything by yourself then, Safira? Uh, so for sahur, I don't normally eat a lot because I have a late iftar here. So I mostly just drink a lot of water and eat a couple of dates. But most evenings, I sometimes I cook for myself. Sometimes I also have a fantastic time breaking fast with my friends, either at a restaurant or at their place when they host iftar dinners. Okay, how about you, Safira? I mean, Deandra. Um, yeah, uh, for me, actually, like, I don't really cook, like, I barely cook, so I prefer to um, going to Baza nearby our campus, our university, and as I mentioned, we have a lot of variety of food, and it's actually amazing to try, like, um, new foods that we don't really find in Indonesia, but maybe, um, yeah, I, I usually just buy it, like, um, in the iftar time, and I keep it to sahur, and I would just reheat it and eat it because I don't really cook. Okay, since you mentioned some uh, traditional food from uh, the locals, uh, can you mention uh, like maybe some of them to us? Um, Malaysian food, yeah. Um, um, the well known is nasi lemak, as we know, and also nasi kanda. And in, in Malaysia, like we have a really, really a variety of drinks that is I couldn't even mention one by one like a lot of, of drinks that is just um, refreshing and also like for the food um, just like yeah nasi lemak and my favorite is um, ayam berempah yeah ayam. just like um, okay. um, right 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 fried chicken <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, now, uh, my last question to both of you. Uh, do you have anything to say to your family and friends in Indonesia? Maybe I'll go to Deandra first. Um, actually, yeah, okay. Um, actually, um, I miss the moment that we having Iftar together and also like looking for, uh, like as Savira mentioned, like um, Takjil, as we know then. And also, like, um, yeah, I wish that I can be back and be with them now and maybe soon eat. I'll never know. That's all. Right. Okay. <laughs> and now, uh, Safira, go to you. I want to say Ramadan Mubarak for everyone. May this holy month be a time of blessings, peace, and spiritual fulfillment. I hope all of us get to celebrate this month with families and friends. All right. Thank you very much, Shafira, and also Deandra, for joining us this afternoon in Indonesia.